about a year ago, I'm sitting in a leadership team meeting. And before our meetings begin, we go around the table and everybody gives a little bit of an update as to what's happening inside of their, their department. And Sandra gets up and Sandra says, um, so during our promotion last, no last night, our merchant went down. No fault of ours, but our merchant went down. The connection between us and the merchant, something happened. It's still down today. And, and I freaking flashed back to my caveman days when I was a novice entrepreneur and I wanted to do everything in the business. And I said, why the heck didn't you call me? I could have fixed this. Remember when I fixed it last time? I called friends and I could have done it all. And my assistant stood up and goes, hey, what is this? We don't need this negativity. Relax, Chris. Sandra saw the problem last night, and when she saw the problem, she pulled the process. Our processes basically say, if this happens, then do that. So if the merchant goes down, then go to the system, right, and follow the system. So Sandra saw the, pro she saw the problem, saw the process, followed it, went to the system. The system basically says, step one, call this dude. She called him, and within about an hour, everything was fixed. So... They're explaining this to me, and they said, so we didn't have to call you because everything was done. We did not have to talk to you and get you involved in this. Systems are so important. Let me just say, this is the way alphas think about these things. When you have an obstacle, you first study it and then with your team. And then you create a solution for it. And after you create a solution, you test it. And after you test it, you systematize it. A one-page, simple system. And after you do that, you create a process for it. And unfortunately, that's where most companies stop and they believe, oh my God, we have this thing covered. That's not done. Like, that will still create failure in most companies. Just having a system does not create success. It does not mean you worked on your business and now you're an alpha. It means that you are one step away from being successful. Because alphas understand that now you need to hand that off to somebody who owns the process so that you're not slowed down by that obstacle ever again. Because I promise you right now, there's 10 competitors in here right now that are biting at your heels, that are one launch away from overtaking you, and the seconds that you save by not getting slowed down by these obstacles are going to be the difference between success and struggle for you over the coming months. Next, alphas understand how to spend their time. Novices do it themselves. Why do they do it themselves? Well, they do it themselves because, number one, nobody could do it better than them. Or, number two, they can't afford anybody. Successful people, they understand that they have to hire employees. Alphas understand that employees are great for one level of your business. But in order to really scale a company quickly, you need to develop leaders. And, and by the way, I don't care if that person that you're developing into a leader is an employee or an independent contractor, or a vendor, it doesn't make a difference. We have a, we have a, a, a company in Club 28 who, when I met him 14 months ago, was doing about $5 million. Now they're on target to close this year at $35 million. And there's one employee in that entire company, and it's the owner of the company. Everybody else is an independent contractor or a vendor. I'm not saying that's the best scenario. Certainly, it probably isn't. However, it definitely proves that you could develop leaders out of almost anybody in your company. If they have, somebody has leadership qualities inside of them, they could be developed into a driver of your business, whether they're an employee or an independent, independent contractor or a vendor. In fact, the most profitable use of my time in any one of my companies has always been developing leaders. I could go into a company and two, three, four, five X its growth curve with one good person, even if they're running crappy systems. What you cannot do is go into a company that has great systems and crappy people and expect it to grow. So the biggest difference between a company that scales and a company that struggles is their ability to develop teams. The challenge is that most entrepreneurs have no clue how to find leaders. How many people in here would love one or two more great leaders in their company? How many people here believe that if you had one or two great leaders in your company, that it would grow even more this year? So most entrepreneurs, unfortunately, here's what they do. They go out there and they place ads. And I'm a big believer in placing ads for certain 
for certain uh, uh, you know, positions inside of our company, mostly the lower level positions. But when you need a driver in your company, when you need a leader, alphas understand that you need to go out there, find great talent, and invite them in. So the very first thing that we do is if we have a, a position that we need filled, a key position, whatever the next best position is in your company, think about this for a second. What is the next best position to have somebody in your company right now? Let's just say for sake of argument, it's a project manager. Then what I would do is go and find the top. I'd write on my whiteboard because we do everything on whiteboards. I'd write on the top of my whiteboard, what are the top five 10 companies that uh, are in my industry that have grown significantly higher than me that I believe are, are where I want to be. Find at least five or 10 of them. Write them down on your whiteboard. And then go to each one of their LinkedIn profiles and look for the project manager in them. And do not, do not jump ahead of me and think I'm going to tell you to poach somebody. Do not poach people from other companies. It makes you look like a piece of shit in their eyes and, and, and makes you feel like a worm inside of your eyes and it makes you look bad in the industry. It's not good for building a brand. But what you can do is you can find their project manager and you could write them a personal email from LinkedIn. And that personal email would say something like, hey, my name's Chris, I'm the uh, founder of XYZ Company, and we've had some, some really great growth over the last couple of years, and I believe that growth came mostly because of our values, and then list some of your values, and also because we treat our team like family. And the only difference between where we are right now and where we want to go is a great project manager. And I see that you're a project manager at ABC Company. And we have a tremendous amount of respect for ABC Company, the amount that you've grown, the way you've grown, everything. But I also know that like-minded people hang out with like-minded people. So if you know of any other great project managers who would like to be associated with a growing company, then I, I would really appreciate a personal introduction. Here's my private email address. Here's my private phone number. I will personally, my commitment to you is that if you recommend somebody to me, I will personally get on the phone and explain everything to them. And I'll talk to them about the benefits and I'll talk to them about everything inside of our company. And personally, my company is always hanging a, kind of a, a carrot at the end of the stick for these people. And we try to motivate them. Not motivate the people who are referring, but let them know that we're gonna take care of people. So we end our in-mail by saying something like, hey, if we end up working with somebody that you refer, that you refer to us, then I promise we'll treat them like family. I promise we'll help them to achieve what they want to achieve in life, not just grow inside of our company, but grow as people. And I will give them a piece of the growth of the company because everybody in our team gets a piece of the growth of the company. And I don't care between you and I how much you define as a piece. Whether maybe it's 0.000002%. I don't care, but here's what you should remember. Most of those project managers have been inside of those big companies and they've watched them grow. And they have not been given any piece of that growth. So for them to believe that they can come over to a company that's gonna treat them well and give them a piece of the growth is pretty fucking outstanding. So you're gonna get two kind of replies from this. The first reply is gonna be, well, um, uh, thank you, I'll keep my ears open. And that's great. They just opened up a door for you, right? You could communicate with them anytime you want to. But the other reply you're going to get is, well, that sounds really good. Um, I may know somebody, but before I refer somebody to you, can we jump on the phone? And what is that person doing? They're raising their hand saying, I don't know. I might want to change my career. That's pretty cool. And what did that cost you? It cost you a LinkedIn in-mail. That's it. It's free. It didn't cost you hundreds of dollars to place ads in ZipRecruiter and, 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 and Indeed and, and all these other, and, and all these other uh, you know, engines, which I think are great for the right kind of person. But it didn't cost you that. And it didn't cost you the time to sift through hundreds of, of applications. And it didn't cost you the time of meeting with 10 or 12 people who are going to lie to your fucking face. One little email 